Shalom, Jacob here from Abba Achab. Welcome back. We'll try to continue and see how far we get with Barak 27, the chapter of Tehilim that is customarily by some said during the month of Elul and till Simhat Torah, apparently. And so we'll recap the first verse, Le David, simple understanding that this is to this is to be attributed to David who's scribing this because the sages teach that there's actually 10 different authors for Tehillim, 10 different sage prophets that each participated in David Amelech when he was compiling Tehillim and not writing it, meaning himself. When he compiled it from 10 different elders, amongst them Adam HaRishon, Adam himself, you know, chapter uh, 92, or we could see the Targum spell that out for us as well. But, and then on the deeper level, we said Le David is really like alluding to Hashem, because Hashem's name has David with like three yuds, which, resem- which represent the Torahs of Hashem. The three Torahs alluded to in the word who, and to use the numbers as we learn in the Pesach Haggadah, you know, who knows five, who knows six, and then who knows one, two, but also one is the, the Chavruta, the Aleph. The symbol Aleph is the, is the two people face to face having a conversation across the table, learning Torah face to face. That is seen in the Aleph. That's the meaning of Aleph. And so the, this name alludes to Hashem as well. Le David. And then the Targum gives us a pretext word or spells it out fully because, like, Hashem is infinite and seemingly so far out there. Hashem generates the whole world as well. But how do you connect with infinity? Hashem is also seemingly very silent. You know, there's no open sort of words from the heavens and things. And if there ever was like a time like that. But how do we know what is Hashem on earth? Or what do we have from Hashem on earth? And that is Hashem's wisdom when it's seen especially in its true form as it was given at Sinai. Sinai with the, in English, with the symbols in, in their true forms and the shapes, which are not just symbols, but they are 22 signs, symbols, pictures, numbers, sounds, stories, powers, functions, abilities, the Aleph Bet themselves, these are the keys to the entire system of Torah. Before you even get involved in the book, just examine even the symbols that make up the book and then, you know, see if you want to continue, which I would bet if you could say such a thing, of course you will continue. Once you even learn the basics, the Aleph Bet themselves, I mean, of course, who wouldn't want to learn? Now there's an entire system incorporating these beautiful lessons and concepts together you know of course i want i would love to to learn that and so that is the pretext word it says le david to david hamelech who who is the mashiach and who is also represents every single person in am israel literally david is rav zamir koen shlita explains is is the words is written dalit vidalit. It's as if saying dal vidal, poor or lacking, and 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 poor and lacking. And Rav Moshe Shapiro's it's all via Rav Avram Kalimi explains. In Hallel we say mikimi meafar dal. David Amelech was raised up from being a, a little shepherd who was uh, even you know they didn't think anything much of David and he was just out. The, you know, being being a shepherd and doing his thing. But then when the prophet Shimuel is arriving and they're going through the brothers and he says, no, it's not any of these. Do you have a, is there another son or something? Is something missing? And then he's like, yes, I actually do have a son, David. I think the eighth son, if I'm not, got to double check it. But anyway, David Amel, who, who, which is, it's kind of like not true in a way too, because like Yishai, these are outstanding individuals. David didn't come out of a vacuum, essentially. These are great people in their own right. But for right now, David Amelik was just a regular person. 
and is, and that was the point. And then he was raised up. But even though he was raised up to be the very king of Israel, and at that time leading into literally the king of the world at that time, Shlomo Amelech, his son, Mikimi me'afar, that God raised me up from the dust, and potential really, but God raised me up from the dust for right now, Dal, I still view myself as Dal and lacking everything, and I need you, Hashem, every single second. And David's name is exactly that. I lack everything at all times, and I rely completely on the infinite God generating reality and then sending the people and the things that I need to meet with and connect with and all these kinds of things. That is Hashem. Hashem takes care of the little creatures. So, of course, Hashem is going to take care of a human being, especially a human being that is drawing closer to God. And closeness, as Rabari Arie Kaplan Zitzal explains, is, is, is imitating God, is like being like God. The likeness is the closeness. And so, Le David Hashem. And what is Hashem? Memra de Hashem, the words of Hashem, the Torahs of Hashem. And the Torahs of Hashem are Maim and Or, as we said, water, which is the written scribed Torah that you see in the day, you have to see it, and the clouds, the pillar of clouds in the day, and clouds are condensed water. And Or is light and Esh, Borem Oreha Esh, that is the Torah Shabal Peh. And she proceeds, as we said, summing up quickly. And basically, Hashem, the infinite being, the giver of the Torahs that are fire and water, is Ori V'yishi, my light and my salvation. Mimirai will not, from who will I fear? And really, it's from no, no human being, obviously. I only, and Ira is who will I be in awe of? Who am I impressed with? Or not impressed, like who am I? But like who am I in awe and, and like subservient to? Is Hashem the infinite being? Who do I want to draw close to? Hashem Ma'oz Hayai. Hashem, the infinite being, is the reason for me to be fearless in my life. Me, me of had. So whom, who will I be afraid of? When we're good with God, there's not a single thing that could touch you. When you're occupied in a mitzvah and, and in Torah, there's not a single evil thing that could touch you. So what Hashem, I mean, you know, this is what we're transmitted. Other, <laughs> can't answer what ifs and all these kinds of things, and I don't know. You know, but so we'll see. So that's just the opening verse. Absolute fearlessness. And here it continues and explains why. And really this is prophetically alluding, it means back then, but also it seems that it, it, it applies to the end of times. To, which again, this never has to be happening in the, in the way that it's described and especially in the way that's been sort of pushed and movie made in, into the world. But... All evil prophecies never have to happen. Good prophecies will always happen. And so these are important principles when learning as the sages transmit in the Talmud, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, you know, telling one of the signs between a false prophet and a true prophet is that if a prophet says that something good is going to happen and it does not, that is for sure a false prophet. Good things always come true. And then we just know that if a, a prophet says a bad thing and it doesn't happen, it doesn't disqualify him because it, the evil prophecies can always be overturned and or could happen in the most painless way. As uh, my, my brother via Rabbi Alan Schwartz, via Rabari Kaplan, if I, if I may, if I'm remembering correctly. But basically, oh no, via Rabbi Alan Schwartz, that, you know, Yonah had the most successful prophecy Od arba'im yom ninve nehepahat. Five words. He said five words in this entire massive, huge city that it took three and a half days of walking just to get to the middle of the city, as the text explains. So with, with that, 40 more days in ninve will flip. What that really meant or how it happened in the end, thank God, because that God is good and merciful and not at all Zeus, chas v'shalom. And of course, thank God that God is not this crazy grumpy grandpa god up in the sky or on earth any older young bearded men you know of course has for shalom hashem the infinite being you know so basically
And so how did they come true? It was The whole city flipped. Did it flip like Zdom and Amorah that physically flipped and the whole land was then destroyed? No, it flipped internally. It flipped all the people flipped. And so even though that was the prophecy and that's what they thought was going to happen and might have happened had they not repented, the prophecy still came true, but in a completely painless way. Nehepachat, Ninveh flipped, not physically, spiritually, and were completely saved. So that is uh, God and God's mercies, and that's why we read Yonah and Yom HaKippurim specifically. Zerat Hashem to make a separate video on Yom HaKippurim and the title and the name and everything like that. So David HaMelech is saying, Bikrov alay mereim, kad yikrivun, when come close, or are caused to come close to me, mereim, those who do evil, those who break and shatter and destroy things, those who and do embarrassing things for themselves, their parents, and their whole genealogy and their whole line back. They're embarrassing everyone in doing the evil act. That's why the Targum is mav'ashin, like busha. It's like embarrassing. They're doing such evil, which is ultimately the biggest embarrassment for them. Even though they hide with a mask, Hashem sees who you are and your thoughts before you even know who you are and anything like that. So, when they're coming close, Le'echol Eth Besari, to eat that which is with my flesh. Et is used here, lost in translation entirely. An entire word, maybe arguably the most important word of the written Torah, doesn't exist in translation. It's lost in English. I don't know if it exists in some other language, if anything has a parallel to the word et. But uh, just a huge important point. And there were sages who used to know every single meaning of what et is. What is the et adding here? Et means like with besari. So it could have said le'echol besari, to eat flesh, to eat my flesh. Sorry, besari is conjugated my flesh. But it says le'echol et besari, to eat that which is with my flesh, as Rabbi Moshe Yazgur Shlita, you know, uh, nuanced and explain. And so what does that mean? I don't know at this point in time, but I can only point it out. And here, it's interesting that according to the Targum from the lens of Ashkenaz, is legarama, is like to cause, to cause it to be bone. To eat it is like eat it to the bone, essentially. And the other Targum is legamara, the same symbol. So, it, you know, whichever one is correct, legamara is to eat entirely, to complete. Ligmor is to finish, and gemar, that's why it's called gemara, to get to the finish line, to get to the punch line, to actually know how this whole system of Torah translates into practical reality. And so that's the gemar hadin, that's the gemara. So to eat my flesh, literally, these people, alay mereim, these doers of evil, to, to try to eat my flesh, what does this even mean, God forbid, there's cannibals chasing him. Tsarai ve'oyevai li. But those who were tsarai, my distressors, ve'oyevai, and those who held bad blood and bad intentions over misunderstandings of the past and the hateful teachings of their elders, they, they, over nothing they hate you. So tsarai ve'oyevai li, those who were distressing and my enemies, and that's where oyve in, in Yiddish and that whole concept, where it comes from, oyevai is my enemies. Li, if that happened to me, and when, whenever David Melech is speaking in the singular, really, Tehilim Kaf Gimel reveals that it's for all of Israel. Hashem Ro'i, it's, you know, Dezanyat Ame Bemadbera, that God sustains the whole nation. So God has said, my shepherd, David is saying, but it means the shepherd of Israel altogether, because David is, is unifying the whole nation. He is the speaker of the nation, a true king is crowned by the will of free people and a true representative and not these elite tyrants that no one knows where they came from, who appointed them, who made them king and boss and everything. So anyway, the enemies and distressors to me, Hema Chashelu Venafalu. Every distress and all of these enemies that have all this ill will and over mistaken ideas, Hema, they were the ones, Chashilu, that failed in their plans, Venafalu, where the source of the English fall. So Rabbi Isaac Mosensen Shlita explains in Edenics the root 
of Hebrew, the roots of all languages on the face of earth, and the rabbi actually shows you. He has like goes through every language, all the main languages from ancient till modern, show, showing the source of he, Hebrew is the root. Via Rabbi Zamir Konshi, who quoted that in his book. But anyway, they were the ones, Nafalu, who fell and are now fallen. So the enemies come close. That is what David Amelech is saying. And it, trying to literally eat me to the bone or eat my flesh and completely end me. That which is it with my flesh maybe is the soul that is with my flesh. So maybe like to literally kill my soul and, you know, destroy my body. God forbid, and which is what they did to some of these great Tanaic sages, God forbid, has v'shalom and has v'shalom in every possible way. Oh my gosh. But Sarai ve'oi but those who were distressing and were my enemies, they were the ones to completely fail in all of their evil plans, and they fell. Therefore, David HaMelech continues, Im tahane alai mahane. If you would, tahane is, in modern times, tahana is a station, but tahane is to make a dwelling. And the Targum is, tishre, to make dwell. Like God's, why the month of tishre, God causes, God's presence will dwell on earth again. Those who repent, undo the evils, especially between humans. God is so forgiving, but God can't forgive what people do to one another. Only people need to seek each other's uh, apologies, which is a huge revelation. As Rabbi Eliezer Hagadol, who was a convert to Israel, is the one to teach such a teaching. The leader of Israel, you know, and a convert. Because Israel is built on converts, and you can check out our article and other things like that. But im tahane alai mahane, if you would station around me and over me an entire camp, is this a friendly camp? The Targum says the things explicitly. Mashiriyat Rashi'e, a camp of Rishaim, a camp of wicked people, and Rishaim are smart for evil. So if you were to surround me with a whole camp of these super smart evil people, lo yirali bi, will not fear me mentally, my heart, my emotions, I am strong. Im takum alai milhama, even if they're succeeding in an actual war, God forbid, and again, our goal is to avoid such problems, to, to, to come back to Hashem right now wholeheartedly and tangibly, meaning to the Aleph Bet, to the Torahs, to see things like we've never seen them before. It's, it can't be the same thing that we've had, obviously, because it won't change. It needs to be something fresh, new, and it's really not new. It's the most ancient thing, but it's new for us. So lo yirali biim takum alai milchama if a whole war and krav is close quarter combat bezoth ani botheach botheach bezoth in her in the feminine ani botheach I fully trust and or fully logic you know logically deduce and completely understand wholeheartedly whole mindly. Umit rachitz is like I, like the word rachatz is to wash, is to be, be absorbed by this wisdom. But bezot in the feminine is an allusion to the entire Torah, and specifically the Torah Shebel Peh, which is the feminine. So in the Torah Shebel Peh, I fully trust and I have arrived logically and concluded that no human being made this information no human being created these symbols and the concepts the interconnectivity you'd have to live a thousand years twice to try to come up with any of the connections and any of these things if ever someone could if it hadn't been already revealed and once it's revealed now people could think and create ideas based off of the original thing no one could originate something completely that no one could imagine or whatever Okay. <laughs> so David Amelech is explaining. Ahat Sha'alti. One, one again in the feminine. Ahat Sha'alti. One feminine being, Sha'alti. I asked. 
And the word Sha'alti, the Vilna Gaon, via Rav Moshe Shapir, as itself, via Rav Avram Kalimi, via Kol Lashon, via Reshi Jerusalem, basically saying, Sha'alti means for yourself. So there was one feminine being that I asked, or one feminine concept or thing, Sha'alti, that I asked for myself, Me'et. Hashem, from that which is before the infinite God. And me'et is the same symbols as the word emet, truth, which is the very things before God, as if God literally gives us the symbols of truth. And this is literally the very thing between us and God is God's wisdom in its original form, the truth itself, that we have to see it up close. So one thing I ask from before the Hashem, the infinite being, that is completely unique, set apart, but at the same time. So that's Kadosh, but at the same time, Baruch Hu. At the same time, source of everything is Hashem, the giver of the Aleph Bet and the Torahs and the creator of this universe that's built with the Aleph Bet and these concepts and no one created the Torah is explaining to you everything. If, if you're awake, if you know what you're looking at, it's really an incredible thing. And again, in order to fully understand the written Torah is the entire spoken Torah, to go through it. And then once you go through everything, can you start to see how it's all really there? It's all alluded to there. All of that is just extraction of what's here. And it, trans it was transmitted together, of course, at Sinai, as we discussed in the previous video. Everything, the whole Torah entirely was given at Sinai. And way more, even if we could say such a thing, than we have today in the Torah Shebel Per realm, in Midrashim, although the main essence of everything, and especially the Torah Shebechtav, is symbol for symbol as it was given. And everything is as it was given. Gone through by the sages, and we have the different versions to use them together to, under, to paint the fullest picture that we possibly can without seeing the original, without Hazrat uh, Hashem. Eliyahu and Avi, prophecy, the revival of the, of the dead physically, if, if this is supposed to happen, if Hashem is meaning it to be in a physical thing and not just like a cute little metaphor, it can't be that. It, it has to be the, the real deal in, in all, on all levels. You know, there's ten, at least 10 different categories of people that are considered dead when they're living, as we've said. So it's a revival of the dead and all of these meanings. So, Ahat Sha'alti Met Hashem, one feminine thing I've asked from before the infinite God, and Otha, her, Avakesh. That's a different word now. It's not Sha'alti, it's Avakesh, which means for everybody. One thing I asked for myself, Hashem, from before God, but that very thing. Now I avakesh. I want it for everyone. I want everyone to have this Rat Hashem the same experience or similar experiences. They'll have each a unique experience, but to do the same things, to be in the same physical locations, to do the you know, shivti beveith Hashem. It's explaining to be able to sit, to sit and relax for a second in this crazy world, beveith muktasha. Da Hashem, in the Beit Mikdash of the Infinite Being. And in today, in exile, it's called a Beit Knesset or a Beit Midrash. Thank God, these safe havens. To be able to sit in the Beit Mikdash, and the Beit Mikdash Ma'at is considered the Beit Midrash in a Beit Knesset. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So, so that's what we have today. But to really, David HaMelech literally got to sit in the Beit Mikdash. Or did he pass away before the whole building of it? So, I mean, it was all because of him anyway. But Shifti Bevet Hashem, let me sit in the house of Hashem. Kol Yemei Hayai. And as we learn in the Haggadah, Yemei Hayai is the Yamim. Kol Yemei Hayai is at night as well. So night and day to be in the Beit HaMikdash, according to the first sage. And then the Hahamim say... Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, if I'm not mistaken, was 18 at the time when he rose to become the head of the whole place. But it says, Kol um, Yemei So according to the sages, Yemei Hayai is the Yamim, is Olam Hazeh. Kol Yemei Hayai would be Le'emot HaMashiach. 
So all the days, according to both meanings anyway, how specifically and nuanced the whole Torah is speaking, and that's just an important thing to highlight. So, Shivti bevet Hashem kol yemei hayai. This is what I asked from God, and this is what I want for everyone. Lahazot binoam Hashem. To be able to, to perceive prophetically, to be able to deeply understand and grasp and see it, and like, oh, wow, like, when you see it, you'll, you'll bug out, like, that's exactly it, a true seeing, like, okay, I understand exactly what you mean. I under- see, I see it, basically. I see it, what, what you're saying now, when you're being described a symbol, and you finally see it for yourself. Like, I don't know, the person has to stop talking, I got it already, kind of, because <laughs> you can't unsee it now, you know, that's what it is. That's how it's transmitted, that's how we, it's observable in the universe and all these things. So, lahazot bin noam Hashem, to see in the pleasantness of the infinite being. And the pleasantness is alluded to in the word, in the Aramaic, bevasimta, or bevasimutha de Hashem. Besamim is like a pleasant fragrance, fragrant branches and spices and things, but also it has the, the word emet hiding there, which is the Aleph Bet and Ketav Ashuri, the Aleph Bet in their true forms. And it has the, the, the symbols for the entire Torah of Hashem, which, it, which begins Bereshit, then Mem, Mishnah, Me'ematai, from when? And then the, the t- first Talmud, Tana Hechaka'e. So Noam, the pleasantness of the infinite God. To finally be able to perceive the Aleph Bet deeply. When you see an Aleph in Ketav Ashuri, you see unity. You see also at the same time uniqueness to be able to be set apart and distinguished. That which divides simultaneously connects. All of the deep teachings, to finally see it in the symbol. Ulevaker, and to visit the Targum Boker is uh, Levaker here is to is translated as to visit, but Levaker Behechalo. To visit in God's chambers and you know in, in these deep concepts. And this has to do maybe with the teaching of the Baal Shem Tov in the name of the sages, I think, but I've heard it from uh, Rabari Kaplan via of and uh, Rav Zamir Koenshlita, via the Baal Shem Tov, is that a person is where his thoughts are. And so when you're occupied in Torah, you are in that scene, you're in that situation. That's where you are. And that's why if someone's daydreaming or whatever, you have to like call their name. You have to shake them awake sometimes because they're not here right now. Their body's here, but they are not. Their mind, who they are, where their focus is. They could reconnect with their body and then they're like, huh, you know, and they snap out of it. But the real person. And so to be conceptually in these Midrashim, that the Midrash and the Torah could sends your mind to play such pristine, gorgeous, stunning places that doesn't exist in any other language. And so it's so important, obviously, to see the original, to come back to the original, and it's so easy. All languages are essentially jambled Hebrew, is the real concept of Edenics, as Rabbi Isaac Moses and Shlita explained. And so it's all set up for people to be able to easily pick up the 22 symbols, apply them to their life immediately. It'll improve your whole life off the get-go. And then it will unlock for you the entire Torahs with these symbols and everything like that. And then it will enable the people to be reaching such beautiful concepts. And when you're there, you're not in evil darkness, thank God. And you're in the most beautiful places. And coming close, we change internally. We realize the beauty of of existence and, and the infinite being who generates it. And then we, we fall in love with beauty wisdom with god's torahs on earth and we then thank the infinite being for giving us this precious gift to humanity that was given male and female masculine feminine halves which parallel our brain masculine feminine halves as the vilna explains 
and uh, then we masculine feminine halves get to experience this concept of the Torah's uniting and these unique forces that when they arrive together they yield all this new results and creativity and literally you create this new world Bezrat Hashem all of these things will be understood but I think that we'll pause here and uh, I hope this was a good one thank you so much for watching questions comments let us know and uh, all the best